Hi, listeners. Welcome to the She Speaks Life podcast, a weekly encouragement where we share our God stories. I'm your host, Jamie Elizabeth, and I am so glad you are spending time with us today to listen. Hey, friend. Welcome back to She Speaks Life podcast. I have with me author and podcaster Summer Colbert, and she will be sharing with us about her experience with Church Hurt and the steps she took to begin this oftentimes difficult healing process. And she's also going to talk with us about marriage and how that affects us when we can get wounded in church. Hi, Summer. Welcome to She Speaks Life. Hi. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be a very important topic. I know I have been through a similar experience not too long ago, and I'm excited that we got to meet here. Uh, You're a podcaster yourself. Uh, Your podcast is called Love Where You Are which is such a great title. And I was kind of, you know, looking into your website and how that all got started. And you said love in Hebrew is Ahava. Am I pronouncing that right? That's right. Okay. And I love how you just broke that down to being intentional, um, having it be love through uh, an intentional mindset and how we are to uh, serve others through the actions of love. Um, And you wear many hats. You're also an advocate for adoption. And do you want to just speak on that? Yes, absolutely. I am actually, I recently accepted the role of director of adoption and foster care with my local church here in Arkansas. And I serve on staff with the Arkansas Baptist Children's Home and Family Ministries as Connected Champion, and that is a division of our ministry which focuses on foster care and adoption, creating that awareness and championing the body of Christ to step back into the need for kids who they need safe places and and Christian families to love them and to share Christ with them. So I'm privileged to get to do that Mm -hmm. on top of raising my three um, slash four. We have a young man that we also mentor, and so he's with us a great deal of the time. And so the Lord has just opened the door and created a lot of opportunities for me to learn, to be able to pour back out this this heart and this message that you have shared about, Jamie, with um, Ahava being the word that um, originally was a word that my husband was given for a child that we thought that we were adopting in Africa. And so when that adoption fell through, we walked through the grief stages of that and, and learned that actually the Lord was birthing a ministry for us in that name rather than a child. And so what we love about that word is if you you study it and you break it down in the Hebrew, the word ahav, which is the root word of ahava, means to give. And so mm-hmm. ahava is the, the Hebrew word for love, but it really is talking about a giving. And so that's where I get that that action of just intentional love and to love is to give of yourself and in a sacrificial way. So it's been cool how the Lord has crafted this story for us and this message and and that I get to share it with others. Mm, That is so neat. I love that story. And I've never heard of the Hebrew meaning. So that is so cool. And I know adoption and foster care, that is also important. I mean, that was one of the things Jesus told us was, you know, take care of the widows and the um, and the children. And yeah. so I love that you're involved in that. I know uh, I'm involved in all God's children and they take care of the orphans and the widows. And um, I know that's a, a big passion of mine too. So, so that. cool. Yeah. So let's get right into uh, uh, what we're going to talk about here on what is even church hurt. I think um, most of us may know already, but you know this seems to be a little more common than you know you think. Um, as I've walked through it, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of women who have gone through this, and you know, people were imperfect. You know, even uh, pastors and leaders. You know, and and so things are going to happen to where we. Uh, get offended. And I think it's 
very, I don't know, therapeutic and encouraging and inspiring to hear other people's stories on how they overcame and went through that healing process because the Lord doesn't want us staying there and stuck. But how do we get through to the other side? Um, Because we all know when we're sitting in unforgiveness, it's just going to shrink us back and it's going to you know, the enemy wants to just thwart us off of our course of our race that we're running for, for Christ. And he'll do everything possible. And unforgiveness will just eat you up with bitterness inside and keep you from moving forward. So I would love for you just to start us out with that and how that kind of carried through in your marriage as well. Hmm. Yeah, it it really is true. There's so much to what you just said, Jamie. And because we do, we have to recognize that whenever there's more than one person in the room, there's potential for conflict, right? Because we're sinful beings and that's how it is this side of heaven. And as we're both walking our own individual journeys of growing with the Lord, we can't always expect that the person that we are you know, interacting with is going to be in that same part or that same level of their spiritual journey. And so, you know, I think it's important to recognize that when you've experienced church hurt, and I actually just did a podcast episode on my show about this, and we called it, how did, how do I deal with mean girls in the church? Because we've all had, you know, it's very similar to what you're talking about, just dealing with those mean girl moments when you have felt um, talked about, when you felt not included, when uh, there has been just a very direct conflict for whatever reason, you know, the church is not exempt from that because we're all sinful right. humans. And so it's already a battle to fight that expectation. I feel like as believers that an outside world is looking at us and putting pressure on us as though we're supposed to be perfect when we're not, we're loved by a perfect God. That doesn't mean that we ourselves are perfect and we're still growing in him and we still fall short and we still do hurtful things, sometimes intentional and sometimes unintentional. And that can reflect where we are in our spiritual journey with the Lord. You know, when you're spiritually immature, you have the potential to be very hurtful. And so it really, there's so much to just focusing on your own walk with the Lord. And I think that comes with wisdom. And I think that comes with asking for wisdom. And because God wants to reveal these things, he wants to grow us, but he also knows when we're teachable and when we're not. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, these hurtful situations do take place. And you know, you have experienced it. I've experienced, I think most people have experienced it in some way or another. And that's why we see so much inconsistency in attendance in a local body of believers. It's why we see church hopping, if you will, because you go one place, you don't feel welcomed or somebody said something hurtful, or you might even just perceive an offense and it made you feel uncomfortable. And the enemy can use that over and over again to, if you've been hurt in one place, then you take that wounding to the next. And then it can just compound because you're, you're still carrying that, that wounding that you haven't dealt with. Like you were talking about that unforgiveness Mm -hmm. and he can just cause you to, to feel that over and over again and remind you of that and rob you of the potential to really set roots in the next place and the next and the next. And so it renders you ineffective in the kingdom because we know from the new Testament that the Lord designed us. He wants us to be in a body of believers and in fellowship with one another another and walking out our spiritual journey and our lives together. So the enemy hates that. He knows that we're two or three are gathered in his name, that mm-hmm. there he will be and great will be their peace. And so, you know, he wants to disrupt. So we have to look at the enemy himself and, and his goal. And he is unrelenting in his pursuit of our destruction. And that includes us individually. It includes our families. It includes our marriages. And it includes the church. He mm-hmm. wants to destroy. He never relents on that. And he never wears out, even though we do. And that's why we need to lean into the strength of the Lord and not the strength of ourselves as we walk this out. So I'm very mm-hmm. passionate about this topic, if you can't tell, Jamie. And it is something oh, that... Good. You know, we have learned through a series of of different events. Um, My husband and I were a part of a church plant team several years ago that turned out to be extremely hurtful, both for us um, just as a family within our marriage. And then we came out of that and started walking through the healing process of that, only to find ourselves in very hurtful situations in our kids' Christian school. And it wasn't a church setting. It was believers who were all in the same mindset of Christian education. And then we just experienced utter betrayal. Mm. And, you know, we've learned a lot of lessons through all of that. And we can get into that more. I don't want to to dominate the conversation here today, but we can get into that and just the lessons that we've learned. But that's been our experience in, in multiple ways. Um, the Lord has allowed those things to grow us, to mm-hmm 
instill wisdom in us that we didn't have before. We can see things coming from a mile away now that maybe we didn't see before because we were spiritually immature or we were too trusting in, in an unhealthy sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also, I, I believe he allowed those things to happen so that we would move on to another yeah. season of life and another season of service and ministry. So that's just in a nutshell, kind of our story and just my heart for this topic. Yeah, I can relate. Definitely. You know, and throughout, I would say the mistreatments, I knew from just seeing other families just leave uh, this church. I didn't want to leave because I was just frankly, you know, hurt and I'm going off my own will. I really right. wanted to be inside God's will. So, you know, praying about it over a course of a few years of going through just, you know, something's not sitting right. You know, we find out later, like lifestyle isn't matching with what's going on on the stage. I mean, there's yeah. just cracks that the enemy has worked its way in. And and that's something too that we got to remember that we're not fighting, you know, flesh and blood, but right. what's going on in the heavenly realms, the evil forces. And so with that, we've got spiritual weapons to battle that. And so one of them, you know, is prayer. Obviously, that's our big uh, weapon and, you know, the armor that we can read about in Ephesians 6. But It was definitely something that I knew in prayer as my spiritual weapon. Hey, like, I just don't want to leave because of my own will. I want it to be God's will. So finally, over a course of some time, our family, we were released. And like you were saying, I feel definitely that God allowed this because of what he had for my next season, my next chapter. So when things aren't, you know, matching up and your vision for your le- and leadership isn't matching with the other leader's vision, then, you know, there's some things that, you know, you just need to step back and go, gosh, you know, this seems like a dead end, you know, Lord, like either miraculously open the door or lead me another way. Yeah. And so it was just for the right time you know, and that's something I won't see until probably later on why the timing was so much later. But -hmm. like you said, there's so much growth in going through that, that I know I'll be using later in life, you know, going through the whole uh, forgiveness process. So speaking of that, how did you guys go through the healing process. Take us through the initial, yes, we're hurt. Okay. How do we respond to this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was kind of twofold for us because speaking of being released, like you were sharing, I wanted to get out way sooner than my husband did. And so that was a real struggle in our marriage because I was seeing things that he simply was not. And Mm -hmm. so there was this disconnect between he and I because it was just compounding for me more and more and more every week. And I was seeing things and it was just unhealthy. And um, it was really robbing me of unity in my marriage. And so here I am as a loving wife to an amazing husband. And I feel like I'm almost losing him to a certain degree because he is remaining loyal to this commitment that he made as we started this church plant, like I had shared. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Lord, this is not good. Like, what do I do? And I'm trying to communicate with him and it's falling on deaf ears. And so now I've got hurt with my husband and with the church. And so I'm wrestling with all of this. And, And I'll be honest, I was in a season of just survival mode for a while. And this went on for for an extended period of time. And little by little, things started to happen that he started listening just enough to where he was considering and really praying about and and genuinely wrestling with the Lord about whether or not our family should leave. Mm -hmm. And we got to a breaking point. We really did where things were just really, really bad. And I I felt alone in my marriage. I had a house full of people. At that point, we had three kids. We had just adopted our daughter, who was an infant, who we were dealing with adoption grief with her. And so she would scream day and night. My mom and dad were living with us. 
my husband was gone all the time because of his church commitments and his job. And I was trying to keep the ship afloat everywhere else. And yeah. so I, I really was just trying to survive and, and take breaths and keep the tiny humans alive and sort of myself mm -hmm. in the process. And so I was about as worn down as you can imagine. And I'm sure many of your listeners can relate to seasons like that in your life for different experiences that they've had. And mm -hmm. so as we finally got to that point where my husband came to me and said, I finally feel a release from the Lord. I couldn't even express joy mm. or even feel joy in that moment because I was so weary and broken that I just had kind of gone numb, if that right. makes sense. And yeah. so it was very much a process over the course of months and months and even years of him acknowledging and understanding and my ability to communicate in a healthy way the hurt that I felt between he and I. Mm -hmm. And for the Lord to slowly begin to open his eyes and for him to see things for what they actually were and what I'd been telling him all along. But I just had to wait for that moment for the Lord to reveal that to him. And so again, being patient for teachable moments when you yourself or somebody you love is ready to receive from the Lord what he's trying to grow them in. And mm -hmm. so that was a really tough one. So I had to work through that process of forgiving my husband. Um, mm -hmm. because I almost felt abandoned, even though we laid in the same bed every night. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that took some really tough conversations. It took us learning how to communicate in a different way than we ever had before in our marriage, because up to that point, things had been so easy and mm -hmm. so comfortable because he really is and still is my best friend and my person. I mean, he is this, this side of heaven and aside from the father, I mean, he is just my everything. And so that made it even harder. Um, right. So through all of that, it took, and, and we never did take the step for professional counseling, but I would certainly champion that for anybody who feels like that would be helpful and who feels like they've hit a wall and being able to communicate in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. um, but just know that one, it's not a one and done session. It is something that does take time. And so to be patient, I think that was one of the biggest things in learning how to forgive him was understanding that this was just a part of his story. And I can't be frustrated that he hadn't gotten the lesson yet. Yeah. And that's really hard for me because quite frankly, in my own flesh, I fuss at myself for what I haven't learned yet, for what I did wrong early in my parenting years or in my marriage or how I've handled things wrong. I don't have a lot of grace for myself. And so I had to learn how to extend grace to him. And then of course, for myself as well through all of this, because I thought, oh, why didn't I just say no from the get-go? Why did I commit to this? Why did I think mm -hmm. this was a good idea? I could have spared us all this heartache and frustration and grief. And no, mm -hmm. we walked through it for a reason. And, and the Lord will continue to use that, even if it's just for somebody to hear our story today as mm -hmm. they're listening and they can relate to it and be blessed by it and grow from it, then okay, that's worth it. That's worth it for me. So mm -hmm. because that's our job, right? And go back to that Ahava love. Let me give of my story. Let me give of my pain, my heartache, the lessons that I've learned so that you might benefit from it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been one thing. As we stepped out of that, um, I was fortunate to step right into a Bible study at a church that I had no affiliation with whatsoever. I had a neighbor friend who invited me, a lady who was teaching one locally, and she's an author and a podcaster, and her name's Suzanne Eller, and she had written a book called The Unburdened Heart, and it was a book on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so I went several weeks um, just going through that study and attending every week, and again, just still coming out of that numbness and, and allowing myself to feel again and experience a renewed life and, and a renewed just sense of direction because I just felt so stuck. And quite frankly, I felt trapped. Mm -hmm. So that was one aspect of it. Um, stepping away from the actual church hurt, that also took time because when we stepped away, everybody that was a part of our friend circle, our uh, people that we did life with, that ceased to be because we stepped away. So therefore we weren't a part of the group anymore. And so we had to really be okay with that and understand that that was a part of it. And that was honestly something that my husband needed to see mm -hmm. that true friendships don't end that way. That's not how true friendships treat you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that was a part of that learning process. And so all of that to say it was a take a deep breath and just survive for the day kind of a season. If that's what you need, have a conversation when you feel like your heart is ready for it, if you need, um, and trust the Lord with the timing of the healing process. And there have still been triggers for me that have come up just mm -hmm. even in recent months and years where something will happen. It will trigger me all the way back to that hurt. And my husband will have no clue 
that he did something completely unrelated, but it took me back to the hurt that I felt when we were walking through that season of life. And so I have had to do my own tough work with the Lord and in my own heart of, you can't just keep going back to that. You can't just Mm -hmm. keep resorting back to that hurt that you feel because we've healed from it. Our marriage is amazing. He is a wonderful, godly man who truly was pursuing the Lord at the time, misguided as he may have been by toxic leadership. Mm -hmm. He was still, his heart was in the right place. And so I had to really choose to focus on what was good with his intentions, what was good about him and his heart. And then the heart behind the church when we started that whole endeavor was good. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you learn lessons and we experienced toxic leadership and we experienced some things where there were, there was massive overstepping and interference in our other life relationships to the point where when we stepped away, that's why we had nobody because we'd been isolated from anybody else in our lives. So that's a very long version of the story. Um, But we really did. It was, um, it was a patience in the process of forgiveness and learning to be okay with that and learning to not even ask the Lord why so much anymore, but what do you want me to learn? Mm -hmm. And Lord, would you just sit with me and help me to heal? Yeah, that all that is so good. I can just unravel each thing that you just talked about even more so on my end. And, you know, it's so true when you experience that church hurt. And I was telling my husband, I'm like, it's like cancel culture inside the church. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we haven't heard from anybody. You know, when you decide to move on and, you know, you really do find, like you were saying, your true friends when you do leave, because it's like when nobody is like reaching out, hey, let's grab lunch. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, you know, it's, I call it the cancel culture inside <laughs> church. Just yeah. as much. It's true. And yeah. actually I was talking to one of our pastors about this recently and he made a good point because he loves to study sociology and he's like, there's a danger when it becomes about tribalism yeah, rather than what the New Testament church, church is supposed to look like. And that just really struck me. And I had to sit on that for a little while and think, wow, you know, we can really be guilty of that, whether it's your kid's sports team, whether it's mm-hmm. the school you attended or the church that you attend. It's not about loyalty to the tribe. Like this is the body of Christ we're talking about. So yeah. let's not let's not muddy the waters and, and miscommunicate what theology is saying and what we believe and, and who we're supposed to be as believers. It's not about what building you walk in. It's about who we worship and who we serve and how we're supposed to treat one another based on what scripture says. Mm, That's so good and so true. I mean, right on. Yeah. The verse Proverbs 18, 24, it says, there are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. And we can change that into a sister. And, you know, and unfortunately that happens when one leaves a church, but also it gives us and and I'm saying me um personally to know like if that happens in the future to somebody like I've been there I know it doesn't feel good I'm reaching yeah. out to that person if I hadn't seen them in a while and just absolutely see what's going on and not be a church click you know clicky with your church like your right. tribe mentality and all those things i mean is just such a great awareness and a new perspective to not do that in the future or not be that way in the future so exactly so good and i could totally r- relate with you were saying with um your friend inviting you to a bible study that was what happened to me too and it was a study of lamentations right so it's like yeah. oh you know going through like you know pain and sorrow but it was just a very interesting book of the bible to study and it was just kind of the perfect time of just getting through and and seeing the hope again and um after going through so much rejection and um and and really it was it was to further like the ministry which which you could see the enemy trying to 
you know, stop that from happening. I mean, right. it was it was a um, rejection of wanting to advance uh, discipleship with the women. So I could just see him just trying to clog all that up and try to keep it from happening. So, uh, mm -hmm. but we all know like God's got something so much better when he, you know, takes us through something and shows us the way and we're doing it according to his will. And I think too, you were saying the gradual process of forgiveness. And that's important to know because it's not a one and done thing. It's a constant right. thing to go to the Lord and just be like, praying and just receiving that forgiveness and knowing like Jesus commanded it, you know, that we are to forgive others because he forgave us. And that, you know, is a command and it's, and it's not just, you know, this, I'm telling you what to, it's for our own good so that right. you know, we can live in freedom and in abundance and not be bound up and held hostage in this bitterness and, and get uh, off track and right. not do the will, what he's called us to do. So I love that you're just explaining that is a gradual process because I know I just keep praying for those people. That's what helps for me. And I know you're talking about in your podcast um, that you had somebody on there saying how to handle mean girls and you're we talking about, you know, being wounded in the church. And I remember your guest saying, you know, Jesus prayed three times about unity and how yeah. important that was. And when I heard that, I was like, he knew like we would have like major division, not just, you know, in the world, but within right. the body of Christ, within our church. So that was a good uh, eye opener too, just to know that it's important to forgive and hopefully get to that point where if we see that person, it doesn't sting any longer, right? Yes. So, so what, what are your thoughts on forgiveness and, and what are the things that helped you along the way? Mm. You know, I have a friend who her whole ministry is based around what she calls the love challenge. Mm. And one of the things that she said a while back that has stuck with me, is she said, I want to get to the point in my walk with the Lord where I am unoffendable. Mm. And I thought, Wow. That's amazing because we live in such a culture of offense, the slightest thing. I mean, if somebody breathes on you the wrong way now, you can be offended and just be all up in arms about it and cause so much destruction with your tongue mm -hmm. and with your actions. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. And it really is harder to do less, to do nothing, to just sit with the Lord, to not take it to social media, to not take it to other people, to not involve other people that were close to the situation, like my guest was talking about on, on our recent episode. You know, that's the easy thing to do because when we feel that sting of offense, when we feel that hurt, we just want to lash out and just express that and get it out. And it ends up every single time it makes the situation worse. And so that goes back to that conversation of spiritual maturity. Of when we get to that place, because it's going to happen again, we are going to experience hurt and offense again. As long as we're breathing, we have the potential to experience that. But as long as we're breathing, we also have the potential to do it differently in such a way that causes people to stop and go, what's different about you? And why did you react that way rather than what I expect you to react? You know what I mean? Right, right. And so, which is the whole point as Christ followers. And so I think when we get to that mindset, it really is a renewal of our mind when it comes to forgiveness. And, and mm -hmm. I will say with absolute certainty, my own experience, and I know that you can attest to the same thing, Jamie, that the Lord is ready and willing to meet you in these moments where mm -hmm. you have been hurt. He feels that. Jesus wept. He grieved mm -hmm. when he saw his people in pain and when they were suffering. And he wants to meet you in his word. And I will tell you, when we were walking through some of these situations, like I camped out in Matthew 5, love mm -hmm. your enemies. You know, yeah. that was one that, I mean, I just, there are so many underlines and notes in my Bible right now mm -hmm. that I can go back to and I can remember when I'm flipping through and I see that it reminds me of that season and that mindset shift and that heart work that the Lord was doing with me. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that it doesn't hurt. You're allowed to acknowledge that it hurts. You're allowed mm -hmm. to feel that. It is it is not one of those things where I'm saying you are super spiritual when you get to the point where it doesn't hurt anymore. 
because mm-hmm. we're human and we were designed to feel and and it is hurtful when things when people do things to you and so but if you're able to receive it in such a way and process it with the lord in a healthy mm-hmm. way and say okay lord this feels terrible and and it there it may be tears it may be screams it may be you know lots of walks with between you and the lord and you just venting out i mean look at the scripture look at how david was just raw before the lord and right. asking for the destruction of his enemies and his frustrations even with the lord why does this keep happening lord why have you abandoned me why 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 all that the lord wants you to wrestle those mm-hmm. things out with him but the point is with him not mm-hmm. with others. Don't go out and partner with the enemy and do more damage because that's what the enemy wants. Like you're talking right. about the yeah. battle in the heavenlies. He mm-hmm. wants to, to wound you and turn you into a loose cannon that goes out and wreaks havoc on the right. body of Christ and the name of Christ. Mm-hmm. And so if we're aware of that, as we walk through the process of forgiveness, that's going to help stay our hand and stay our words before we can do more damage and cause us to look inward and look upward with the Lord and walk through that process because I promise you, he will meet you in that. Yeah. So good. I mean, that's exactly what I did. I just turned to David and read all the Psalms, you know, and just poured my heart out to him. And, and, you know, it, it really did, um, you know, it's like praise him in the pain and it really did uplift me and it brought joy and it helped me get through those dark times and where I could start feeling again. So, um, yeah, yeah, it, it definitely does help. And, uh, there's a reason why it's in the Bible. Hello. Exactly. (laughs) We need to pay attention. I I know. I'm like, wow, this actually works. So, So good. Yeah. It's not an instruction manual on how to be super spiritual. You know, it's like, it's there to help you walk through all of the humanness that yes. we experience, you know, and and to point us to him through every bit of it. Yeah, so good. Well, as we finish up, I like to ask the guests to leave a takeaway. So you just uh, speak life to us as we conclude here. Mm, yeah, that, I really appreciate you just allowing me the opportunity to share today. I, I think I would love to encourage by telling you a quick story. And it's the story of a young college girl who had been in ministry involvement all of her life. She'd been in the church all of her life and she led worship and she volunteered with youth and kids. And I mean, her whole life was wrapped around the church. And one day there was a situation that came about where a, a staff position was offered to someone and this girl really felt it her duty to make sure that this person didn't receive that staff position. And so it was more or less a coup, you know, if you Mm -hmm. will, where things were discussed and and all behind the scenes and trying to um, disrupt that plan. And there was a lot of hurt for that person who, who was being welcomed into that position, who'd been offered that position to the point where she ended up leaving the church because of what had been done to her. And that girl who caused all the havoc was me. Mm. I was reckless. I was spiritually immature. I thought I was speaking on behalf of people who I I had no business speaking on behalf of. And so I tell that story out of humility because don't give up on people when they hurt you because Mm. you never know where the Lord's going to take them and how he's going to use them and how he's going to use that situation to grow that person and others. Mm-hmm. So it goes back to this idea of of grace and really walking with the Lord and forgiveness and being patient with one another because we really don't know where we are spiritually. We don't know where the Lord is walking, you know, with that person or if the Lord is even if they're walking with that person. And so I think it's just really important to remember that we all fail, mm-hmm. but we can always be redeemed. Yeah. And so when we look to the Lord, it helps us to be able to walk through that a little bit easier. I I read a quote recently and I'll close with this. It said, if being hurt by the church causes you to lose faith in God, then your faith was in people, not in God. Mm, Yeah. And I think that's a perfect way to close out this conversation. If we're looking to the Lord, we can walk through all the good and all the bad. He's present with us in Mm -hmm. every step of the way, and he will grow us through every experience that we have. But the point is to look to him and not to others. Yeah. Oh, so good. I love it. Well, thank you, Summer, for sharing your wisdom and encouragement on this topic. And I know it's 
can be a, a difficult one and it's not all that easy to go through the healing journey, but the more we can uh, shine the light on this and bring some words of encouragement through our own story. I think that could point people the right direction to the Lord and really uh, seek Him and what He says on forgiveness to make their hearts whole again. So thank Amen. you, Summer. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much for listening today. I trust that God has encouraged you through this message. For more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com and sign up. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Jamie Elizabeth She Speaks Life. That's J-A-Y-M-E, Elizabeth, She Speaks Life. Until next time, my friends, I pray God reveals himself through your own life story.